Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 22nd of March. End strike by Wednesday of face action. Provincial chief warns doctor in Western India. Rights activist in Geneva claims there is no freedom of expression in Pakistani Kashmir. And Bangladesh death row criminal of banned militant outfit seeks presidential mercy. And now for all the details, warning the resident doctors on strike to resume their duties at the earliest, Education Minister of India's Western Maharashtra province on Wednesday said that six months' salary will be deducted if they continued with the protest. A report. The court came down heavily on the protesting doctors on Tuesday and asked its representative body, the Maharashtra Association of Resident Doctors, to ask all the doctors to resume their duties immediately. Else it would be contempt of court as the doctors' organization has given an undertaking that it would not go on strike. The court also directed Chief Minister Drevendra Fadnavis led government and the Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation or BMC to provide adequate security to doctors in all hospitals all over Mumbai and Maharashtra. On Wednesday, the doctors were given a final notice to end their nearly three day mass strike. We have given an ultimatum because the court has been asked what are you doing. And that's why we have given an ultimatum. If we don't take our strike back in the evening at 8 o'clock, तो हम उनका छह महीने का जो सैलरी है, जो तनका है, वो हम उनके कपात करने वाले हैं। Earlier in March, a video footage of a doctor being brutally assaulted at a government hospital went viral on social media, showing a crowd which included relatives of patients. A probe was later ordered into the matter. Meanwhile, people in illegally occupied territories of Gilead, Baltistan and Pakistan-administered Kashmir for decades have been the victims of human rights violations at the hands of Pakistan. Activists and human rights crusaders in Geneva highlighted their plight. Human rights activists on the sidelines of 34th session of United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva held a conference highlighting atrocities faced by people of Kilkit, Baltistan and Pakistan-administered Kashmir. The activists said that those who raise their voices are subjected to arrests, forced disappearances and killings. किसी किस्म की फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन नहीं है और नेशनल एक्शन प्लान के की आर्ड लेके तो जो वाइसिस यूमेराइज्ड की थी उनको भी सुप्रेस किया जा रहा है। कश्मीरी अलेज्ड दैट द पीपल ऑफ द टू डिस्प्यूटेड टेरिटरीज आर लिविंग इन एन एनवायरनमेंट ऑफ हरासमेंट। उनकी तमाम हर तरह की फ्रीडम जो है, including freedom of expression जो है, वो छीन ली गई है और उनको जो भी हक की बात करता है, उसको फौरन गिरफ्तार कर लिया जाता है, उसके बाद उसको disappear कर दिया जाता है और अब तो judiciary जो है, वो भी जो जो fundamentalistों के साथ है, चाहे वो आजाद कश्मीर का supreme court का justice judge हो, वो The national action plan was established by Pakistan in January 2015 to crack down on terrorism and to supplement the ongoing anti-terrorist offensive in the country. However, critics say that they have been used to persecute minority faiths and unfairly target minorities. Moving on, hundreds of vehicles stranded on both sides of the Afghanistan-Pakistan border have started moving as Pakistan resumed crossings. The frontier was closed in last month following a series of attacks that Islamabad blamed on militants operating from across the border. Container trucks and public transport vehicles started moving across the Afghanistan-Pakistan border on Tuesday after a frontier checkpoint had been closed for more than a month. The order to reopen the two main border crossings between the countries came a day earlier when Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif reversed the closure that followed a series of attacks that Islamabad blamed on militants operating from across the frontier. The 
Relations between both the countries have been tense in recent months, with both accusing each other of not doing enough to tackle militants. Afghanistan and Pakistan should be able to sit down and get out of the situation. And for the end of the day, I feel like both governments have been able to do it. As far as the gate has been closed, I feel like the end of the day, it will be the same way that the people of Afghanistan will be able to do it and Afghanistan will be able to do it. Last month, Pakistan shut the crossing at Torkham and at Chaman border crossings, stranding thousands of vehicles on both sides of the border and choking off key trading routes for landlocked Afghanistan. Moving on to news from Pakistan, Pakistan's lower house voted to renew the mandate for military courts to try civilian terrorism suspects for a further two years. This comes despite concerns among activists over allegations of rights violations by such courts in the past. Pakistan's National Assembly voted to reinstate military courts in the country for two years after two months lapse on Tuesday evening. The courts were first introduced for two years in January 2015 to expedite the cases of hardcore terrorists after Pakistani Taliban attacked an army school in Peshawar, killing more than 140 people, mostly children. The courts which try civilians charged with terrorism offences had a two-year mandate that expired on 7th of January. One of the main arguments made in favour of military courts is that the government cannot provide adequate security to judges who preside over terrorism-related cases. But critics say that the courts lack transparency and due process. Human rights activists complain the military courts fail to provide transparent justice and violate the suspect's legal rights, unlike civilian courts. The upper house of parliament is expected to vote on the measure to conform it into law in the coming days. Moving on to news from Nepal, leaders of Nepal's Pushkamal Dehel led government's coalition member held a rally carrying flames in Birgun city late on Tuesday. The Rashtriya Prajatantra Party or RPP is protesting against the election commission's decision of removing Hindu state and monarchy from its party statute and are demanding the restoration of two eliminated terms. It is the fourth largest party in parliament and advocates reinstatement of Nepal as a Hindu state and a democracy with space for monarchy. And now moving on to news from Bangladesh, death row criminal Harkatul Jihad al-Islami Bangladesh or Huji chief Mufti Abdul Hanan opted to seek presidential clemency according to the jail authorities on Wednesday. Another death row convict, Hanan's aide, would also seek clemency. Hanan and two accomplices were sentenced to death for a failed assassination attempt in 2004 on the then British High Commissioner to Bangladesh, Anwar Chaudhary. Meanwhile, the international watchdog, Human Rights Watch, has urged Bangladesh to immediately halt the imminent execution, stating that criminals need to be punished and that Bangladesh was moving in the wrong direction. The Supreme Court of Bangladesh on Tuesday released its full verdict that upheld its order confirming the death penalties. It has dismissed the review petitions of the three death row convicts and has cleared the way for the jail authorities to start the process for executing them. And in news from Afghanistan, Barbara Turned Rapper won the Afghan Star Music Contest after beating the first female finalist in the competition on Tuesday. The young winner stated he would have been equally happy at his contender's win.
Sayyid Jamal Mubarak's A Babu Turned Rapper came out as the winner of the Afghan talent show Afghan Star on Tuesday after beating the first female finalist of the competition. Mubarak, who hailed from Afghanistan's long marginalized Hazara ethnic minority, won viewers over with lyrics capturing both the hope and despair of young people living through a war against Taliban militants now in its 16th year. خوشحالستم که مقام اول تونستم بگیرم اما ما خوشحالم میشدم که زلال جان مقام اول می گرفت با خاطر یک دهی شرایط امروزی که برای زنها بسیار شرایط تنگ است واقعا قابل افتخار است که زلال جان تونست تا دو بهترین را پیدا کنه The sole breadwinner of his home Mubarak said he discovered rap in Iran and used to sing while cutting hair Afghan star modeled on singing contests popular across the world is in its 12th season on one of Afghanistan's biggest private television network. This year's edition stood out after a female 18-year-old singer Zubala Hashimi from the deeply conservative east of the country reached the final for the first time, defying widespread attitudes against women performers. An annual yet unique fair for the sale of donkeys and other animals was held in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province. Traders and customers came in large numbers to grab the best deals. Hundreds of decorated donkeys were put up for sale at an annual fair in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province. The fair called Gardhav Mela witnessed the convergence of traders and prospective customers looking for the best deal on donkeys, horses and mules. The annual gathering saw people flocking to feed milk, grams and other edibles to the donkeys as it is believed that the animals grant people's wishes. Here, from far away, 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 from far away. यहाँ के गर्दब और खच्चर इतने प्रसिद्ध हैं कि ये अन्य प्रदेश में जाते हैं माँ बायसों देवी तक भी जाते हैं और यहाँ पर ये धोबी बिरादरी के लोग आपस में अपनी बेटी और बेटों के रिश्ता तय करते हैं मान्यता है कि इस मेले में पौराणिक मेले में तय हुए रिश्ते कई जन्मों तक चलते हैं Donkeys traded at the fair are used to carry pilgrims to the Vaishno Devi shrine in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province, adding to its religious significance. The fair also saw stalls selling decorative items for the animals, carts and carriages. The prices of donkeys, mules and horses at the fair range from a few hundred dollars to more than thousand five hundred dollars and every year, overall businesses crosses more than $160,000. Well, that's the way towards in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. End strike by Wednesday or face action, provincial chief warns doctors in Western India. Rights activists in Geneva claim there is no freedom of expression in Pakistani Kashmir. And Bangladesh death row criminal of banned militant outfit seeks presidential mercy. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.